Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. Now, autonomous cars. We've heard a lot about them, they've been in the news a lot recently, but why on earth do we need autonomous cars? Now, if you use an autonomous car, you don't need to worry about parking it or charging it or washing it or insuring it or even owning it. You just use it when you need it and then you forget about it for the rest of the time. Well, that's the dream, but we're not quite there yet. The recent problem with the Uber self-driving taxi in San Francisco, where it accidentally ran over a red light, but luckily not a pedestrian who was about to cross the pedestrian crossing, was a little bit hashtag orcs. It was banned immediately, and rightly so. So clearly, the road to autonomous vehicles is not going to be straightforward. It's going to be a bit bumpy. It's going to be a bit hashtag orcs. Now, we've all heard of Google Cars, Google's autonomous car fleet, which has now racked up over 2 million autonomously driven miles on American roads. So now Google, or Alphabet, I mean, what a naff name is that, have now set up a separate company for their autonomous vehicle technology. It's called Waymo. Well, OK, at least it's better than Alphabet. It's called Waymo, and they are now in talks with lots of big motor manufacturers, specifically Honda, uh, to uh, install their autonomous driving technology in loads of other cars. The first tests of these cars have already taken place. The Waymo team conducted the first fully autonomous drive in Austin, Texas a while ago. This was an electric car with no police escort, driving on public roads and negotiating four-way stops, pedestrians and narrow streets, and without a steering wheel. The passenger was a bloke called Steve Mahan, a legally blind friend of Waymo principal engineer Nathaniel Fairfield. He rode in the car alone, the first time he'd ever done such a thing. Okay, take care. Of course, nothing is quite as straightforward as it seems. The changes this technology could bring are enormous. An important fact to remember is that at the moment, 90% of all the cars in the world are unused 90% of the time. That is, however you look at it, fairly bloody stupid. But the arguments around this technology are very divided. I mean, on the one side, if we did adopt this technology, we'd have safer cars, we'd have less road deaths, we'd have less cars, we'd need less roads, we wouldn't need car parks. These cars would be working 24-7. They wouldn't be sitting idle for 90% of the time blocking up the streets and the car parks. What a ridiculous waste of time that is. So it would be a massive improvement. Those are all potentially good things. On the flip side, at the moment, it is estimated there are 1.2 billion people in the world who earn their living from driving. What are they going to do? I haven't heard Alphabet addressing that yet, or any of the other big tech companies who are happily automating everything so no one's got a job and none of us can afford to ride in a fully autonomous car. There is some problems ahead, I will admit that. But I'm still a utopian optimist. Don't hate me for it. And I think this technology is really exciting and I'm really amazed to see it being developed. It will make a difference. Anyway, that's all we've got time for. This is just a little tiddly tiddly fully charged this time. But please remember to come back. There's some excellent episodes coming coming in the future from all over the world. Really exciting stuff. Please subscribe to it. If you feel of a mind, you can always support us on Patreon. No pressure at all, but the link's down below the video. You know I love you. And if you have been, thank you for watching.